Okay, so Pi News episode 64. I've been playing around a lot with Windows 95 and 98 on a Raspberry Pi 4 in the last week, and it's been running really, really well, really impressed with it. But uh, I also tried to get it running on a Raspberry Pi 0 2W. Unfortunately, it was just crashing way too much to be able to install it. I got quite close, but, uh, but not close enough, and I realized the operating system wasn't gonna run that well. Anyway, let's get on with Pi News. So first up is one of the best videos I think I've ever seen on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is such a good video. Let's zoom in a bit. This is from TikTok. And I'll put a link in the description. Uh, the channel, I guess you call it channel on TikTok, is B.Maker. And this is such a professional build. I'll just show a few little snippets of it. The maker side of it is just amazing and it's incredible as to how it works. It's a Raspberry Pi 0 2W and is a properly working submarine. I'm not going to show the whole video because the bit where he takes it into a river and goes 200 meters is just incredible. So it's this bit here and uh, as I say, if you watch one Raspberry Pi video today, I would make it this one because it just is incredible. The, the maker side of the Pi is amazing, you know, Pi's in space and everything else. This is very relatable, even though uh, the technology behind it is so well done. Next up, uh, really cool, especially for people who were around in the 80s. Uh, so this is Knight Rider, or Kit, uh, which was the car computer from the series Knight Rider. And this has been made into a working voice control device. And I've got a link to another video. And I really like the way this question was answered. Do you miss your TV show? Again, I'll put links in the description of this, but it really does look cool. And uh, you imagine putting this in your car and using it as your voice control system with all these lights and everything. Yeah, very, very impressive. Got to have the flashing red lights on the front of the car as well, though. So I saw this video the other day on the Spawn Wave channel. It came up in my feed, actually. And uh, if we scroll down, this is the one. The GameCube just got a massive upgrade. So I'll put a link in the description to the video, but as you can see from this, uh, the GameCube had seen one of the biggest breakthroughs in a long time with the Raspberry Pi Pico, now taking the place of a mod chip inside the system, allowing it to boot into popular homebrew applications at a fraction of the price. So, you know, the Pico is, is getting everywhere in the retro gaming market, and it is becoming, you know, really, really important in that scene. And the reason it's so popular is the community behind it, but also the low price of the device. Uh, just all comes together to make it a yeah, must-have item. And now it's got Wi-Fi on it. That obviously brings in all sorts of possibilities as well. Story from Pharonix here. Egalia working towards faster 2D rendering for older Raspberry Pi boards. For those still using older Raspberry Pi hardware prior to the current Raspberry Pi 4, the 2D rendering under X11 can be slow and problematic. Currently, the Raspberry Pi official OS images disable Glamour 2D acceleration that uses OpenGL for accelerating 2D rendering with the x.org server. With Glamour enabled, X11 rendering can be slow with the software-based rendering. Egalia, though, is working on overcoming this in being able to support accelerated rendering while using the XF86 video mode setting driver, but without Glamour. So for older devices, this could be really interesting. Uh, it could be much nicer to run an operating system on a Pi 3 and before. Back to the retro gaming with a Pico again. You can see here there's a Pico, which is converting a conventional USB mouse to be able to work with a PlayStation 1. Uh, and this is cool. All the wiring and everything is there. And there's a list of all the mouse enabled games on Wikipedia as well, if you were interested in doing this. So yeah, obviously things like Lemmings it would work well with, uh, Command and Conquer, although the low res of the PlayStation. I remember the first time I tried to play Command and Conquer on a PS1 after I'd already played it on a PC and it was very, very disappointing. But uh, yeah, brilliant project and, uh, and really nice to see things like this that people can do themselves. I'm a big fan of the PlayStation 1. Next up, uh, always love these portable builds. Uh, so made a retro-inspired portable pie over the past two years. I call it the Ceres 1 and uh, you can see it's got a, a raised keyboard. It's so hard to work out how big some of these things are uh, from some of these pictures. So the casing comes from an old Talking Whiz uh, toy computer from the 80s. And here we are, someone's asked the dimensions, look, nine inch by eight inch by 2.5 inch. Yeah, it does look cool. 
Now this is something that came up on Reddit and uh, I didn't actually know these existed. Uh, so if we have a look at the images that are on there. So this is a wave share board and I've got a wave share board I bought for a CM4, uh, which has never arrived. Uh, well, I've got the wave share board. I haven't got the CM4, but um, they make some really, really impressive boards for the Raspberry Pi. So you can see here, you would just fit a Raspberry Pi 02 w uh, in here. So we're going with the micro USBs and you've got the HDMI converts it to what looks like full-size HDMI. You've got four USB 2 sockets and an Ethernet socket and a little switch there. I'm not sure what the switch is for uh, and power still goes in here. It'd be nice to have seen this change to USB-C. And so I had a look around and uh, you can see AliExpress have got them and here it is. Uh, well, this is not the Waveshare one but a different one. Similar principle. So you can see it pretty much looks like the same layout 11 pound 81 I think I must order one I don't know how long it will take to get to the UK uh, or oh, estimated delivery August the 9th yeah I think I'll probably order one of those uh, I did find them on eBay um, but quite a lot more expensive and again not the Waveshare one but uh, I'm sure both boards will do a similar job I think the Waveshare one was somewhere on eBay maybe it was here uh, on AliExpress uh, here it is look 13 pound 62 might be worth looking to see which of the two gives me better functionality. I see it works with different boards as well, or they have different variations for different boards. <laughs> What's going on there? I just clicked on that and it's 7905. Is that with the Pi? Ah, uh, yeah, so bundle kit A is with a Pi 02W. That's why the cost has gone up, although it shouldn't go up as much as that. But as we know, the 02W is an amazing board and yeah, the price has gone sky high on these uh, in, unless you're getting it from an official seller and then it's very difficult to get a hold of them uh, yeah i'm gonna have to try one of these because they just look cool not sure which one yet but i'm gonna have to try one next up uh, and this is a story that should have been in the last pi news but i must have accidentally deleted the tab or something i made a basic clock with a pi zero and an e-ink display uh, and if we have a look at the picture, have a look at it a little bit closer. There's something cool about e-ink displays. Uh, so Kindles use them and have incredible battery life. So like uh, something like a three month battery life. Uh, and uh, I remember there was a smartphone once that had uh, an e-ink display on one side and a touch screen on the other. So if you were just reading something, uh, you could power it down, so to speak. Uh, and it wouldn't be using any power while you're reading the uh, information on that screen. But uh, yeah, I really like that one, nice and neat. So from It's Foss News, Raspberry Pi 4 support is coming to Fedora Linux. So Fedora Linux 37 to introduce the official support for Raspberry Pi 4. So it's already supported other Raspberry Pi boards, but the official support is coming to the Pi 4. So the official support in Fedora Linux 37 will only be implemented if it is approved by the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee and it's been held up by the lack of accelerated graphics, which is often a problem within Linux and ARM-based devices. Now, with upstream work on newer Linux kernel and Mesa on bringing graphics acceleration for Raspberry Pi 4, it lets them enable the support for it. So I'll be looking at that in the future. Upstream now supports accelerated graphics using the V3D GPU for both OpenGL, ES, and Vulkan. So I'll definitely be having a look at that in the future. What's disappointing is they say support for the Wi-Fi on Raspberry Pi 400 is not a part of this process. And a non-Raspberry Pi story next, but I thought a lot of the subscribers would be interested in why Android needs more RAM than iOS. And I won't go through the details, you can have a read through it yourself, but some Android devices now are using 12 gig of RAM on a mobile phone operating system. In fact, here, look, Galaxy S22 Ultra have has 16 gigs of RAM. I, I wasn't aware of that at all. Uh, and most iPhones use, uh, well, six gig of RAM on the Pro versions, but only four gig on the standard versions. And uh, it's to do with how it runs the operating system and various different things. But yeah, it's very interesting. If you want to have a read of it, I just thought it was worth putting in here. And last up, if you don't know Brompton as a brand, they're UK made folding bikes, and they are really high quality, very, very popular. I was going to buy one a few years back and I should have because like a Raspberry Pi, the price has rocketed uh, and they are, I think you pay about £1,000 for a Brompton. I haven't looked recently, but even on the second hand market, because I was just going to buy a frame and play around with it, uh, they are super, super expensive. But as a company, 
Brompton use over a hundred Raspberry Pis in the manufacturing process. So a lot of it is like monitoring things and controlling things and logging things. But uh, yeah, they talk about how they're a big fan of the Raspberry Pi and uh, they've tried other single board computers, but the Pi always wins out on cost and also support. So uh, yeah, have a look through the story. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice video, nicely shot, and Brompton bikes are very cool. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.